In terms of uh, animal use, coming from an agricultural background where uh, on a yearly basis you would uh, have to shear sheep, um, I would object to your um, wool being put in that category because you would see, if you've seen a sheep with a uh, year year old wool, two year old wool, five year old wool, that animal was neglected. So it's for the benefit of the sheep and for the comfort of the summer that they will have to be shorn. That uh, it'll have to be shorn, and that would be um, the wool would be a byproduct, which is then sold off to a woolen mill. So I would therefore have no objections with wool, uh, and also that when you are learning how to shear sheep, you're told how to um, put the sheep into the most comfortable position possible, not only for your benefit when you're shearing it, but for the sheep's benefit. That will be, you know, it'll be keep quiet and it'll be relaxed while this uh, three minutes quote unquote ordeal is uh, happening. Uh, would you have a response to that? Well, w without um, shocking the audience, they, they wouldn't be domesticated sheep in a vegan world um, because we wouldn't bring them into being. Um, also, if you if you think in terms of the needs for shearing, then that's got to be something to do with farming practices because sheep have existed or at least the ancestors of sheep have existed before that need which you would think so it's probably to do with the fact that they're producing too much which means that they then need to be sheared uh, in the same way as that usually it, I mean the, the same argument is often made with with cows who need to be milked now <coughs> cows don't need to be milked in a natural situation where their calf is taking away the calf food, which milk is, at, at the amount that, as it were, nature intended. The real problem is that we have genetically engineered cows with absolutely massive udders. They produce far more than just, yeah. Now, without being an expert on it, I would suggest that there's probably something similar that um, going on there in terms of sheep farming in the sense that we probably try to maximize yield as it would be put you know, in terms of harvest and this kind of stuff and so but my basic vegan argument would be that veganism is built in and animal rights is built in with a critique of domesticates domesticate animals wouldn't be part of the deal that would have um, happened um like many thousands of years prior to any uh, kind of concept of veganism and ethical veganism coming forward. So this would be kind of um, how our modern society uh, operates now. And we're in a world where we're more interconnected with the internet and whatever, we can hear many different points of view. So I think it would be unethical to uh, release these animals in their, with their current genetic makeup into the wild, that they would, wouldn't be able to possibly survive on their own without the human intervention. But this situation has occurred uh, before uh, veganism um, has become so widespread. Yeah, I actually I did a podcast with um, an ex-beef farmer, Harold Brown, who's now a vegan advocate, and um, he um, tried to kind of go through some of the species that might be, as it were, releasable. But that's not part of the deal within animal rights or veganism. What you, what you would do to resolve the issue is not breed any further generations, but you would care for the ones that, that exist. And so what we would advocate as a vegan society would be that the ones who are now alive, which we would probably classify as refugees, we would care for them in sanctuaries where we would care for their welfare. Yes. But we wouldn't artificially breed anymore. We wouldn't, um, and that's another issue, you know, because we would actually prevent them from reproducing, which is another interesting issue within the animal rights context. But what we're trying to do is get ourselves out of a problem not of our making. The vegans don't breed other animals to exploit them. Meat-eating society does. And so if we're trying to figure out a way that we would get from here to there, we're trying to do it in, in the best and most principled kind of way. It's the same as the issue of spay and, and uh, neuter of dogs and cats, etc. Th these are, are always problematic is issues, especially from a rights-based and a rights point of view. At the same time, again, we're often in the situation 
literally in the situation of getting these other animals actually literally dumped on us. When I lived in Liverpool, we had a, a, a kind of small holding. We were known as the animal people. And often you would find a box with, with cats and kittens in them in the morning. And often we would just get puppies thrown over the fence, right? Because it was as though, well, there's something gone wrong. I don't want to deal with this problem. The animal people will do it. And it's a kind of bigger version of that. We're trying to figure out how to get from A to Z to extensive routine, systematic use of other animals to no use of other animals, how we would do that. And as I said, we would do that by them not breeding. We would certainly stop artificially inseminating them, which is a big industry in Ireland, um, especially with, with, with cows and so-called cattle, big industry in Ireland. And we would stop all that. And so, in a sense, we'd have a cut-off point where we'd have a generation which would live out their life uh, as comfortable as we can make them from a welfare point of view, but we, but we wouldn't then have the follow-on generations. That's how we would solve that dilemma, if you like. Any other questions? Well, I'll just draw a, a, a brief comment to you there, um, You've said you, you care for the animals uh, in a welfare sort of camp or whatever until the end of their lives. Um, however, with PETA, in the US where there is a lot of uh, domesticated animals that we've given into their care of things, um, a lot of them are being destroyed. So when they're given the sort of opportunity for the, these welfare camps, it's not really happening. Do you not think the same thing would happen if a vegan state did magically pop into being? Or, or <laughs> can, can you take that after the next question? Just want to make sure we get enough audience. Oh. Uh, yeah, hi. Um, I was wondering a little bit about um, the morality, really, of, of um, killing animals. And, um, of course, if you see other animals as, as fellow beings, um, what I was wondering about is, what's your opinion about, let's say, other animals killing other animals? What would be the, the moral dilemma there from a vegan point of view? And you also mentioned the thing about... Um, stopping, let's say, um, making animals or breeding animals to fit our purpose. But would you also have kind of a view about um, to keep pets? Would it be fine to, let's say, um, try to artificially breed a cat that wouldn't eat other animals? Can we take a few questions before we go? Let, let's see if, if, if we can use the mic in the front row here. Okay. And if, if, you're, if you're at the back, can you come around? And, and, yeah, we'll come, come to you in a second. Yeah, you go ahead. Also, if you want to specify a question towards one of us or both of us, do otherwise I'll assume you're asking about Switch this on or is it on? Switch it on. Just switch on, okay. I'm about 80% vegetarian, right? I don't think it's on. So it's not on, is it? Is that one? Yeah, Oh, thank you. About 80% vegetarian. The reason is that the ritual... Can you hold it a little closer? Oh, yeah. The... Uh, religious ritual slaughter of animals turned me into a sort of almost vegetarian. I'm working towards it. And I'm just wondering, as, as, as atheists, we really have to stand out against the ritual slaughter of animals by the religious, especially in the Middle East. And I'm wondering what you think about that. Have, have we done anything towards that? And maybe we should make a statement towards that at some point. <coughs> Hi, I just wanted to qualify this first by saying I was brought up in a very, very religious background, so I had a strong belief in God, but it was also a very um, ethical, in inverted commas, background where a lot of the people in this particular sect were vegan and relied on um, non animal based products and natural products etc and um, so I had to think a lot as a kid yeah I had to think a lot as a kid about um, where I stood in various issues and I have a couple of I have a couple of serious questions first firstly where does the cutoff happen now now I'm an atheist and I eat meat um, where does the cutoff happen between animals that are the same as us or animals that you call human beings and non-animals. I mean, do you call a fly a human being? Or do you call a, a chimpanzee a human being? Person.